Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here and today we are back with an episode of Guess the Rank. It's been a hot minute since we've done one of these, but today we're going to be looking at four different clips. We've got some insane games for you guys to watch. Some of these clips are hilarious. One of the players maybe didn't even have a rank. You guys are going to have to guess the rank in the comment section down below. we got some crazy stuff, really fun heroes, and uh, yeah, let's get into it. But actually, I, I do want to mention, if you don't know what Guess the Rank is, this is your first time here and you were unfamiliar with the series, essentially you guys submitted clips and then I open up your clips without looking at your rank and based on your gameplay, I have to try to determine what rank you currently are and then at the end of the clips, I'll guess your rank and see if I can get it right. And now let's get into it. Also, I want to tell you guys that if you've been struggling with solo queue and you're looking to get to the next rank, I'm going to be able to help you like literally with the game leap website i'm going to give you guys guides that are going to make it unbelievably clear on what you need to do so if you've been stuck in the solo queue grind you don't know what to do and you want to become absolutely broken <laughs> but like actually you want to become much much better at dota and you want to take it more seriously the game leap website is going to help you do that so click the link down below i'm going to help you get to the next rank and i'll see you there all right, so the first player we're going to be watching here today is Wise11 on the Spirit Breaker. Let's take a look at items, builds, and a little bit of his gameplay to try to guess what rank he is. All right, generally I like to start with team fights. I feel like people kind of uh, prefer to watch team fights over the laning stage. It obviously depends on the person, but... All right, so heading over to the 2411 mark, we got a team fight breaking out. There's a couple main things I like to pay attention to when I'm watching a Spirit Breaker replay. One of them that really always interests me and is, is a clear indicator of skill, not, not always, but a lot of the time, is how fast do they charge? Because like a big thing for me is bad Spirit Breaker players just don't instant charge, just instant charge. So here you actually charge the Kunkka incredibly quickly. So that's a good sign for me. I won't obviously be able to guess your MMR strictly based off that, but it is a good sign. It is a good sign. The item build is also looking pretty clean. Shadowblade Axe and the BKB, super reasonable. Um, and your CS is pretty decent as well. How did your charge get canceled? What happened there? You just wuss out? Where's the charge? Oh no. Wait, what? What canceled your charge? I, I have no idea. But bit of a bummer. Gonna probably go in for the Kunkka. All right, this is a shitty ass fight. There's nothing even to talk about in this fight. All right. <laughs> Let's move on to the next fight. I can't even say anything. I mean, the main thing I would say there is just don't kill yourself. That's probably not a good idea. So I'll have to take off some MMR points for that one. One thing I'd also like to cover, usually when I'm doing these Guess the Rank episodes, guys, I really like to focus on team fights. But a big thing about Spirit Breaker is his ability to push side lanes. Especially when you go Ags, one of the biggest advantage of, of the Ags is the 7 second cooldown on charge. So if you're not constantly charging side lanes and constantly pushing out waves as arguably the best side lane shover in Dota, you should probably just pick a different hero, right? You should probably pick a different hero. So right here, I'm like a little bit concerned because it doesn't really look like your team is gonna take a team fight, right? Like you don't really wanna go on Tidehunter, your team's kind of split up. So in this situation, what I would be doing is I would be pushing in this top wave 100%. I would respawn push in top wave. If I think a fight's gonna break out, okay, I'll charge in. Right, but instantly, I don't really like that you're charging some random ass, you know, Tide Hunter. Like, this doesn't do anything. I would heavily be prioritizing my BKB in a game where the enemy team is, you know, heavily magic damage. Like, this is such a low skill kill attempt. I, I don't know what MMR this is. I'm not gonna guess yet. What in the world are you guys doing? What are you doing? Why are you trying to kill this guy? Like. You don't, maybe if PA had shard or you had shard, it could work. But neither of you guys even have shard. Oh my God, this is the heaviest commitment onto a Tidehunter I've seen in my life. Go for someone else. This guy didn't even have Ravage, he's worthless. Kill somebody else. You could have had a three man charge or kill off the Zeus. Why are you killing this? Stop. Oh my God. All right, charge through. No, dude. Oh my God, all right, all right. I think I'm just gonna guess the rank after this team fight. Like, these charges is, I'm, I mean, I'm being harsh, but like, not gonna lie. Like here, okay? When you're charging in a team fight, don't charge to the first person. Unless they're low and you need to auto attack them to kill them. Which like, I guess you could argue in this team fight, maybe you want to stay on top of Kunkka to kill him. But like, generally what you do is you charge through, right? So let's say there's a line, it's like bowling, right? Well, not, all right, I'm not even gonna try to make a bowling analogy. The point is that you just want to charge through, right? So you should charge a line here because it also would have finished off the line. He died anyway, but... It's besides the point. It's just it's the habit you want to get into. Next thing I want to see is how fast you TP back to base and how fast you charge top. No, TP base. No, no, no. Okay, good, 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 good. Get mana, buy clarity. 
Okay, didn't buy Clarity. No, you don't have a lot of mana. Why would you charge mid? That's the closest lane to the, everyone on your team. All right, thankfully Techies cleared it, so you jungled instead. All right, I'm going to guess the right. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, just based on these fights, I'm going to say, I want to say like, the item build and the CS is pretty good. The overall decision making is like decent. Like this is definitely not, this is not bottom of the barrel, right? We're not talking about Harold here, all right? You know, the, the, the wave shoving and wave clear is, is kind of horrendous. So there's no way it's like, Divine or Immortal. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Archon three is gonna be my guess. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Archon three, and you are Archon one. All right, not a bad go, not a bad go. There we are. Starting off with a pretty good guess. It's been a while since we've done guess the rank here on this channel. But all right, let's get into the second clip. All right, getting into clip number two, we got Dunskies on the Sand King. This is a hero that's very popular in the meta right now. It also recently was bugged out where the shard just like completely exploded the game, but let's take a look at how he can execute specifically on this blink dagger timing. This is always a big thing for me anytime you're playing any sort of an easy healing ward. Uh oh. <laughs> okay. I don't know. <laughs> that was unfortunate to watch. We'll skip ahead a little bit and then we're going to actually look at how the blink dagger timing will be re revealed outside of killing a healing ward and dying, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening, dude? I, I just missed it. What is happening? Holy shit, the execution! Dunkskis, what the hell? This is not how you execute on this at all. Alright, so I'll give you guys a bit of a, a bit of a learning lesson on sanking. So when you're going on someone, generally what you want to do is, if, if you're trying to solo kill them, the way you maximize damage is you Sandstorm, then Stun, then Ulti. The reason why is you want the Sandstorm ticking for as long as humanly possible. So... You don't want to stun Epi. You're losing out on a huge portion of damage. I also feel like you should have taken the Sandstorm DPS. I know people take stun at, at level 10 sometimes and take uh, the talent at, uh, at 11. That's that's fine. But yeah, definitely some execution issues going on here. I think it ends up losing you the kill. Yeah, he gets off the hex because you're not invis as well. He might have had a sentry anyway, but either way. Oh boy. Oh God. Oh, my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's a disaster. All right, well, let, let's move ahead. I'm not gonna, I don't want to judge too much based off those fights. At least you cast your spells, right? Let's, let's, this looks like a much better engagement. We're gonna head off, off, we're gonna head off to the bottom lane here, see what's going on. Fight breaks out, moving the camera ahead. I like that. That's a good sign of a good initiator player. I don't really like this blink in. Wasn't he hexed already? I feel like you should have had more patience to potentially look for a better stun. Sometimes you do have to blink stun right away on Sand King. And the reason why is you want to, you know, well, just initiate. Oh, it's bugged. I can't see. All right. I can see why you'd stun there. I can see why you'd stun. That That's fine. You wanted to make sure Jug got chain stun. You know what? It worked out. I, I totally respect that. I think I think that was a good decision. So right then and there, the, the determination between, you know, when to hold the stun and when to stun right away is potentially a sign of a better player. Uh, but you might have just you might just do that every time. So I don't I don't know if you're actually, you know, switching it up, but not bad. So oh, that was OK. Let's let's move on. All right. Next up, we got a big team fight initiation. All right. Big plays coming out here from the Sand King. So the main thing I like about this clip, the vibe I've been getting from from all of these clips is is like ancient divine-ish. This is, this is my most likely what I'm gonna guess. But the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm pretty convinced this is at least like the upper percentage of Dota players is this is like a good play. He's willing to lead the charge, but most importantly, he's playing a ward, he's playing vision. It's a huge thing for me. I know it seems small, but this like just, he, he kind of like was on this ward before he even saw anyone or before anyone was on it. Like he didn't just react. He was like preemptively playing a ward, which is like a big thing for me. So it gets the two man stun, the epi initiation into the sandstorm, into the auto attacks on the shaman to get the e proc. A fantastic team fight, absolutely carrying his team. So you know, we had a couple of bad fights earlier on. We got a little bit of a turnaround here. So big fight from Dunksies. I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna say that this is. I'm gonna go with my gut. I'm gonna say divine one, divine one. For some reason, maybe nah. I think it's divine one. And you are. Shit! Oh shit! <laughs> the other fights were so bad, but that fight was so good. No. Oh man. All right. 
<laughs> All right, well, well, Dunkskis, I wish you the best, man. Uh, I like your item build. I like your, I don't know, man, I don't know. I, I don't know what I was thinking. What did I see? All right, let's get into the final clip. All right, getting into clip number three, we got Rama Rama Ding Dong on the Luna. We're gonna watch a little bit of laning stage here. We haven't done any laning stage work yet, so let's take a look at the first couple minutes into the game, see his mechanics, see his last hitting, his beam usage, all very important things. First things first though, I'm a little bit concerned about the pre-skill and loaner blessing. One thing for me is if your support does not have a range creep secure, often you want to take it. Now Omni Knight kind of does in his E. Uh, I, I personally don't trust a lot of supports to do it anyway, so I would just be a little bit careful about this. Um, because Luna, you know, she has very bad attack range, so sometimes you can get punished for the lack of beam, and it can cause you to lose range creeps. The aggro denying, I, I like it, uh, considering they're not here. Immediately, uh, evening out the wave, so, oh god. <laughs> so it was a good start. I like the aggro denies considering the enemy couldn't respond, right? They were busy with the Omni Knight. So that was solid. Pretty good CSing, pretty good. Gets every every CS under the tower, that's fantastic. Putting a heavy emphasis on denies. I'm gonna say this is, this is, there's no way this is like super low, Momar. Let's see if he aggros here. Aggros, when it's under, towards the enemy tower, hit. Oh, this is this has got to be high. Oh, all right, this has got to be pretty high. He aggro's and hits to keep it going, to bring it back. Does he aggro again? He aggro. Oh shit, my mic's falling. Dude, there's no way this is Lomar. If Lomar players know how to aggro this well, if Lomar players know how to aggro this well, the Dota community has become ten times better. That's all I'm gonna say. This has to be like somewhat high, Lomar. I mean, aggroing again here is fine too. It's it's good. He's against the double range lane, missing a bit of CS as a result. So it's it's probably not too high. There's definitely a bit of a CS problem. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, Rama Rama definitely got to work a little bit on the CS. Keep it 100. That's that's the main complaint I'd have. Everything else is pretty good. The Tango usage is solid as well. Personally, I would not really buy Wraith Bun on Luna. I think buying the components is fine, but I feel like upgrading is kind of meh. Um. You don't really benefit from the armor. You already have very high armor, so that would be my only major flame. I would rather the Band of Elven skin and an early Gloves of Haste if you're going to look to trade. If the lane is hard, then an early Boots. I think the stick is, is good in this lane as well. So overall, a pretty good start. Let's watch for another minute. The only thing I would say is definitely an issue with last hitting. Outside of that, pretty freaking good. All right, big team fight going on. We got an interesting fight here because even after a decent laning stage, some good mechanics here, He's 0-2, very, very good CS though, well, super solid CS, no BKB though, so let's see how he approaches this fight, because the enemy team has a lot of magical damage, they have pretty decent heroes when it comes to getting on top of the Luna, so he does a lot of damage, it's whether or not he can stay in position and output that damage is going to be the question here. Let's take a look and see his positioning, so enters the fight, generally you're going to lead with Beam, it's your highest range spell, you just want to get it off cooldown, um, okay, going for the Eclipse right away here, it ends up working out because of the stun onto the Ursa, my only concern was if Ursa wasn't an idiot, it probably would have been a wasted Eclipse, but ends up being a good Eclipse, so I'll give you that. Follows up with the Q, gotta kite a little bit here, potentially, if Ursa is strong enough. Or he's just dead. Are you stronger than this guy? I don't like the fact that you walked up to Ursa in the first place, to be honest. Like, like e even the small thing like that always kind of makes me be like, meh. It's not, you know, you shouldn't really walk up to him, right? Unless you know there's going to be a stun, because you don't really man up to Ursa. However, you do have a butterfly, and this guy seems like he's pretty poor. How much net worth does Ursa have? He's actually, he's, he's decently farmed. He's decently farmed. Oh, this is so AFK. Dude. Oh my god. Hit some creeps. All right. <laughs> what do I guess? I, this is tough. This is, I'm going to say this is the hardest one yet, even though I was way off on the last one. I, I think... I think this is like 2k. No. <sighs> I think this is like 2k. I want to see Crusader. I'm going to say I'm going to say Crusader 1. I guessed very high in the last one. I'm going to say Crusader 1. I kind of feel like it's lower based. It's like really weird. His aggro was so profound in the laning stage. It was like really good with bad last thing though. And then like the steam fight was solid. It was solid. So I'm going to say I'm going to say Crusader 1. That's my final guess. And you are Oh shit! Now I'm shitting on people today. <laughs> oh no. Oh wow, okay. Alright, so you're a legend. Wait, which which one are you specifically? I guess you're probably legend three. Everyone's legend three. 
So, all right, I, I apologize. The farming and the aggro is very good. The main thing, Rama, if I had to give you a couple pieces of advice, work, I, I didn't watch too much, obviously, but work on the last inning and the laning stage. I don't know why you had two deaths. Maybe you need to leave the lane a lot earlier. You know, like Luna is a hero that generally will die to nukes and you were against a Rubik Lion. So probably leave the lane earlier. And then I watched a bit of your farming. You need to get out onto the map and get more aggressive with these Mantas. Uh, so you can get your farm up and get map pressure. Uh, but yeah, other than that, let's get into the final clip. All right, getting into our final clip, we got Bazado on the Meepo. Of course, it's a Meepo clip we're gonna end on. Very crazy. Let's get into some Meepo team fights. Actually, first thing we'll do, is it a good Meepo game? I would say the answer is absolutely yes. You're very good against Shaman. You're very good against Wraith King. You're, well, it's, you're okay against Invoker. You're fine against Naga and Necro. I would actually say you're kind of bad against Necro. So not the best. I would say this is like an average Meepo game. Probably slightly above average Meepo game is what I'd say. Slightly above average Meepo game. So yeah, let's let's get into it. So we got some Meepo gameplay going on. We got a a Dragon Lance and a Diffusal build up. I don't know if, how I feel about the Diffusal. I feel like the stats aren't very good. It's only 15 Agi. I mean, the slow is okay, but obviously you don't get the mana burn on the clones. As far as I'm concerned, you don't get the mana, bur mana burn on the clones. I know people have done this. I've seen this in the past. It doesn't seem horrible. Um, the slow does make it convenient to set up for the net. So I can I can understand this and I'm not going to say it's bad. I, I feel like I personally prefer two Dragon Lances, but all right, he finds the Naga, kills off the Naga, invading the jungle. I will say I'm a little bit concerned about you invading with like absolutely no vision, but you know, I, you saw the Invoker bottom and Necro was dead, so it's pretty reasonable. One thing I'd also like to put an emphasis on is Roshan. How early do you Roshan when you can? I saw you ping it there, which is cool, but let's get into a team fight and, and try to determine how good this Meepo player is based on his team fight execution. All right, so here we go, hopping onto the Shaman. So, you know, right then and there, we got some good poof usage, right? We got some good poof usage. You can already tell, he knows how to play Meepo, right? He's got the mechanics down, he's got the ulti orb, uh, <laughs> but he keeps going. So, you guys might be thinking, you know, uh, Speed, how could you possibly determine what rank this player is? Well, we're gonna see from this clip here that he is very ambitious, you know. Isn't defusaling the Naga? A little bit questionable. We're 18 minutes in here, diving the tier force. It's not my not my favorite decision, right? I think there's definitely better plays to make, such as anything else that he could do. But diving the tier force, hopefully Necro doesn't have Scythe. He does have Scythe. Why is he not Scything you? There it is. And the Meepo goes down. Very unfortunate. I can't believe that happened. I can't believe that didn't work out. That's crazy to me. I thought that play was going to work. It seemed really promising. But unfortunate. I guess we'll get into the next clip. All right, next up, we got a Roshan attempt. Right then and there, you know, this gives me some comfort. There's a couple things I will say about this game. I can tell you for a fact, this is definitely not... I mean, I know this is harsh, but it's definitely not like Legend or above. And the reason why I say that is the CS is a little bit low. It's not bad. Honestly, 157 is like decent, but for a hero like Meepo, who like jungles like crazy, it's definitely not where you want to be. But I love the Roshan. I like the item build for the most part. So there's there's a lot of good things going on here. Okay, next thing I want to talk about is fight selection. Uh, looks like you're going to push in the waves. Main thing I still want to see you doing here. When uh, basically I'm watching the minimap right now and your team has, oh God. Your team has has a good amount of vision on the enemy team. I'd love to see you just kind of wipe through the jungle. Take the ancient camp, uh, take this, take the ancients, take this camp, take this camp, take this camp. And the reason why this is really good on Meepo is you can send your main Meepo to follow your team and you can send your clones to farm. So I don't really like, like for this last 20, 30 seconds, this is kind of just, I guess, a Meepo specific thing, but it's something to cover. It's just a bit of inefficiency on the secondary Meepos. I'd love to see them continuing to jungle while you micro. Actually, it kind of looks like they were unless are they running to the camp or are they running to you? Oh, they, okay, they were. Okay, 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 okay. That's pretty good, and then, okay. You know what, I'll, okay, that, that's pretty good. I'll, I'll give you the respect on that. I will say that this play was kind of psycho. None of your team is even close to you, and you're just running into them. I, the reason why this is an issue is if this game wasn't an absolute stomp, it's a horrible play. But let's let's keep going. All right, so next up, we got a team fight. A little team fight right now. Big net onto the Invoker, wow. Really nice usage of the nets here. Basically a perfect usage of the nets. That's fantastic. You can see this player definitely has played quite a bit of Meepo. It's definitely fantastic net usage. One thing I'd like to see is, is a usage of the poofs here. Naga's just such a high armor hero that 
if she summons illusions, it's very valuable to, you know, poof and clear all the illusions out. Also, just in general against high armor heroes such as DK or TB or Naga, it's very nice to use the poofs when you've already gotten on top of them. So that, that's one little critique I'd have there. But overall, well done on the execution there. He's got the ages, so definitely would like to see a high ground push come out here. And okay, there's no creep wave. All right, honestly, I feel like I'm pretty ready to guess the rank. I don't think this is that low. Like, I, I definitely wouldn't guess Herald by any means. But I also would not guess Legend, only because even though he is 11 and 1, I can see some inefficiencies coming out. However, the overall gameplay is good. The, the fight selection is extremely questionable. That is all I will say. My biggest gripe with what's going on here is where the fights are taking place. Every single one of them has taken place under a tower, not based on a smoke, not really a clean jump. It's kind of just walking up to the enemy team. And that's the problem for me. All right, so based on the gameplay, I'm going to say that this is... I'm going to guess what I guessed last time, and I'm going to say that this is Crusader 1. And you are... Unranked? You have a rank. All right, we're going to end the episode there. Unfortunately, the Meepo player doesn't have a rank, but you guys can comment down below what rank you think the Meepo player is. I'm curious to get, uh, what you guys have to say. Just put, I think Meepo is X rank. I guess we'll never know. It doesn't have a rank, but I'm very curious. Nonetheless, thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Guest and Rank. If you enjoyed, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel. If you want more episodes of Guest and Rank, make sure you like the video so that it performs better, and I know you guys are enjoying the series. Nonetheless, I'll see you in the next one, and I'm out. Peace. And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website, where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.